Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I want to thank all 470 something of you for subscribing, so thank you. And if you haven't, go on ahead and do that. So we're a fifth of the way through the 21st century. So no matter what, once you spend a certain amount of money on a camera or a lens, you're gonna get great image quality out of the gate. It's pretty much non-negotiable. And what's also faced this fact that most of these raw files pretty much look the same. And with the minor edits that most people tend to do, you're gonna get the same image across camera companies. Now I've shot Sony, Nikon, both full frame and Fujifilm. And what Fujifilm is doing right now with the film simulations, I think truly sets them apart from the pack. I wanna share with you my three favorite, in no order, <laughs> favorite film simulations that I use in street photography. And then the biggest reason why I believe they have a use case over raw files. Beginning with number one, it's gonna be classic negative. Now you're only going to find classic negative in the newer X-Series bodies, being the X-T4, the X-100V, the X-Pro3, and maybe the X-E4. I'll fact check that when I, once I edit this video. But classic negative has a warmer shift and almost sort of a green tint to the photos. And I think it's the most quote unquote nostalgic looking film simulation that you'll find in the newer bodies. It's very reminiscent of Fujifilm's The Legendary Superior film stock. And I think you can use it in pretty much any environment that I can think of. The only time class negative can be a little bit tough is when there's very dark shadows. And if there's a subject in that shadow, you're gonna have to overexpose it pretty highly. But I like to overexpose class negative anyway, because how it already handles the highlights, I think it makes for a nicer look if you're gonna be in a sunnier condition. Next up is Astia, which is classified as soft in the menus. And really the only thing that I would say is soft about it is these nuts. <laughs> Got Those the colors and contrast. So if you're gonna be photographing people, for example, which is what I mainly use Astia for, my street portraits, it's gonna slightly desaturate people's skin tones, but they'll keep it natural looking enough so that it's kind of a one size fits all people photography film stock, at least in my use. Now my third and final pick for favorite film simulations in street photography is gonna be classic chrome. And I would say this is the most popular, most used film simulation that I see people using online. And I can totally understand why. When it comes to street photography, classic chrome is gonna have, I think the tonal depth necessary for telling a great story and not drawing too much attention from it with intense heavy handed colors. Generally, it's gonna have a lower saturation across the board and a higher enough contrast in the shadows to add a sense of drama. Mostly in the browns, you'll see the saturation at least remain at an equilibrium or even a little bit higher in some cases. But across the board, especially with the blues, you'll see it drop down a bit and shift more towards a cyan and a magenta. I will say though, it's not gonna treat all skin tones equally as some people it won't make much of a difference and sometimes even look better with classic chrome. But other times, quite frankly, it'll suck the life out of your subject. And I don't recommend it as a go-to or even top three idea for use in a portrait setting. I can't remember who it was, but there was somebody on YouTube who referred to classic chrome as the black and white of color photography. And I can totally see why, especially if you look at black and white as the way to strip down all of the unnecessary elements of a photograph and help you focus on a story. Classic Chrome will allow you to do that while still using color. And I think that's what makes it perfect and so widely used in street photography. Now those are just my three favorite film simulations that come built in with the Fujifilm cameras. But the great people at Fuji X Weekly not only have a website, but also have an app where through all of the work that they've done, you can actually program in custom film simulation recipes based off of famous stocks from throughout history. So there are some Kodachrome variations, Portra, Superior, there might even be a Cinestill one. So many that somebody or some people went through the trouble of making that come out very nicely and pretty identical to the real things. So I'm not endorsed by them at all and those sponsorships, I've never talked to them. I just think it's really cool that somebody put in all that effort. You guys should definitely check those out if you want to use something apart from what the cameras offer. But the main reason why I think people should be using them more over raw shooting is because editing simply takes too much time. 
And if there's anything that I've seen, even when I apply Fuji's film simulations as a base to my edits, typically the idea of the shot that I had in my head is closer to the straight out of camera JPEG than the raw processing that Lightroom or Capture One could do. Now, for people who have their own set style, you can probably disregard this message, but to anybody who isn't hyper concerned about having these up in galleries, which is most of us, making money off of these photographs, which is most of us, and you just wanna enjoy the photographic process, which is all of us, allow the camera to do the work for you, and then you just go shoot. For the longest time, I wasn't using features such as aperture priority because I thought that I knew better than my tool. And I was doing raw shooting because I, I thought that I knew how I wanted to work these things better than the camera does. And what I found is that when I allow myself to be led by these feelings that the film simulations have, whether it be Astia, Classic Chrome, Classic Negative, Eterna, etc., it allows me to just focus on the shooting process and it takes so much weight off of your shoulders and saves you so much time once you get home and load the SD card into the computer or your tablet, whatever. When I was doing more paid work in the realm of fashion photography and portraiture, that was where I believed that the intensive editing made a bit more sense because you have a product that you're delivering to a client, you need things to be very specific. But when it comes to street photography, which I imagine most of us are just doing for enjoyment, I don't see the reason in bogging ourselves down with so much intensive editing after the shooting when we have these gorgeous film simulations that can do a lot of the finer work for us and we can just allow ourselves to be led by those color schemes and the thoughts that we have in our head about the given shoot. I myself, like I said, used to be that way, but once I began to let myself be led by just using these straight out of camera JPEGs, it saves so much time and it's made it a much more enjoyable shooting experience. So that's just my recommendation to you, Fuji shooter or person considering leaving their current camera. I actually went from the a7 III to the X-H1 way back in the day, then to the Nikon Z6. And even though it was full frame, pretty much on paper had better image quality in every way you can imagine. I didn't even have it for very long because I missed the character and soul that these Fujifilm images have. So I ended up ditching that thing and coming back to the, the place I call home. And I can't really imagine myself using any different cameras for really any given reason because it's such an enjoyable process and such a streamlined, simple, fun process using these film simulations. But that's just my opinion, and I hope I can help you guys out with that. I want to thank you for watching the video. Please like, subscribe, leave a comment if you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.